Hi, welcome to um, a very special home delivery from Ars Electronica, from Ars Electronica Center, from the main gallery. So I'm uh, in front of an exhibition from uh, uh, Quayola. In the background you see uh, remaining. So this is uh, here in the main gallery a global uh, shift exhibition. And today um, I'm very happy, it's really a pleasure for me to introduce uh, the winner of this year's edition of Prias Electronica category computer animation. So uh, I will introduce, briefly introduce uh, uh, the project. I will give you an insight into the truly process and I will also uh, have the pleasure to talk to uh, Miva Matraik, the Golden Nika winner. So the category computer animation is uh, one of the oldest ones. It's, uh, it started actually at the beginning of the category uh, in 1987. So this category was uh, the first um, um, one and it was a part of uh, this journey, what is media art? The category computer animation, computer music and computer graphics uh, with a very strong um, route to classical art forms actually. So fine arts, uh, music and of course uh, art film. So um, in the last uh, 33 years, the category, of course, uh, evolved, a lot of things changed. And uh, uh, the jury each year has to um, discuss the new criteria uh, for this year's uh, category. And this was quite challenging. Uh, of course, uh, they started with the discussion, what is computer animation? And they, of course, uh, faced the problem that at least uh, every animation is now um, animated on the computer anyway. So is there still uh, this uh, um, core question, this particular device of, of computer animation? And of course there uh, was uh, the starting um, discussion what is media art in the field of filmmaking with strong roots, uh, for instance, in this discussion of uh, expanded cinema. And uh, in the last years, we also had uh, this uh, discussion uh, circling around uh, expanded animation, all these uh, quite interesting fringes with a lot of different art forms like uh, performance art or game art, virtual reality, etc. So this was uh, a very interesting topic uh, during the jury process. Uh, so um, it's very great, uh, very, I'm very happy that we have um, a prime example of this uh, expanded, so-called expanded animation. Uh, and I will first uh, introduce uh, the project, M Miva Metraic, uh, infinitely yours. Uh, first we will roll a trailer and then we will give you a little insight into the jury process. So let's roll the trailer. So it's a, it's a prime example for expanded animation. It merges live performance, theater, sculpture, and animation and tells a story about the world of humanity and nature through performant metaphorical experiences. Uh, so uh, Infinitely Yours is a kaleidoscopic interpretation of global challenges such as climate change, destructive uh, weather, uh, floods, and pollution, and tackles our worries about our our future and the jury especially mentioned uh, the combination of live performance, animation and uh, um, performance art, but also uh, the um, perspective, female perspective uh, um, on this topic, uh, telling this story uh, in a very special way. Miva Matraik physically places her body at the center of this uh, mess, navigating a cinetic journey through natural and man-made infrastructure according to 
the jury statement. I will briefly introduce uh, uh, Miva and then we will start uh, um, the interview. So Miva Materik is an animator, designer and performer based in Los Angeles, touring international and showing uh, um, live performances uh, since a decade, coming from a background in animation. So Miva Materik uh, studied at uh, uh, CalArts, um, experimental animation and integrated media. So this is, I think, also a prime example for integrated media. She creates live staged performances where she interacts with her kaleidoscopic moving images such as shadow silhouettes. She performs her interdisciplinary shadow performances all around the world, including animation film festivals, theater performance festivals, art museums, science museums, etc. So she already gave a lot of uh, talks on very, very famous places uh, like MoMA or uh, New Frontier at Sundance Festival. You exhibited your work there as well. And she's also a co-founder and core collaborator of multimedia theater company, Cloud Eye Control. I think we will talk a little bit more about that later. So um, great to have you here. Hello and good morning, actually, to, to Los Angeles. It's uh, yes, good morning. Nine o'clock already. It's nine a.m. Yes. Perfect. So here in Austria, it's uh, six uh, p.m. and uh, so we have a, a slightly different uh, time uh, situation. So <laughs> I hope uh, uh, I explained it uh, in a very proper way. I think um, um, you have to to give a little bit more insight in, into your body of work. It is actually one of a series. So it's uh, uh, the fourth piece in a series. So you have a lot of other um, projects uh, in a similar mm -hmm. way. So please give us an insight into uh, in infinitely yours and uh, of, of this oeuvre. Great. Um, so uh, for those who just saw the trailer, as well as I believe some of my videos playing in the background of the Skype, um, in terms of my solo work, um, it's been a kind of a long process of experimentation and investigation into the medium of combining animation and my own silhouette as a shadow. So just very simple, I just have an envelope, but you know, um, the setup is that there is a front projector and a screen in a rear projector, and I am back here, you know, creating a shadow with the beam of the rear projector. But then um, the media, the animation that I make is sort of separated into the front and rear media so that I could project on top of my shadow and on top of layers so that my shadow as a silhouette becomes very integrated into the visuals of the worlds that I create. And um, as mentioned, this is the fourth piece I made as a solo. Um, they're kind of a series, but they're also, you know, different pieces. It's not like it's a series as in, um, you know, um, like they continue uh, a story. It's kind of mm. more a continuation of the investigation of the technique. So I started working like this while I was in grad school at CalArts. And um, the first piece was sort of an investigation of perception. Um, there was a lot of kind of sleight of hand, which is a magic term. Um, of creating fake shadows and combining with my own real shadow mm. and how I can create a confusion in the, the perception of the audience. Um, so that was back in 2007 when I made my first piece called Dreaming Elusive Living. Um, and then since then, it's been kind of an ongoing investigation of pushing this medium further. How do I create more complex images and complex kinds of transitions and tra transformations? Mm. And so the newest piece, um, that I just premiered in January of 2020 um, at Sundance New Frontiers. Um, the piece that you saw the trailer for is called Infinitely Yours. So this is a, a, a 20 minute performance. So it's 25 minutes, yeah. 25 minutes performance. <laughs> so uh, give us a little bit more insight into um, the storytelling. So it's, it's all around uh, um, current topics uh, that you actually research, uh, you did a research uh, of looking at newspapers and uh, magazines and collected a lot of materials to bring this all sure. together. So mm -hmm. uh, 25 yes. minutes, how, how yeah. do you tell the story actually? Um, how do you tell a story? Well, I think that's a good question, but um, going back to the inspiration for the piece, um, 
I'm sure that a lot of people, you know, like obviously climate change has been an issue on our minds for quite a long time. But I think in the last five, four or five years, um, there's just been more kind of media attention. And I think as mm -hmm. things have kind of started to spiral out of control a bit with, you know, super storms and flooding and, and unseasonal droughts and, you know, um, large forest fires, it's, it's become much more sort of front of mind and hard to look away from. Um, so as I was wanting to make a new piece, I started to catalog all these articles um, into an app called Evernote, just as a way that I can mark it in notebooks and tag them so I can search them again. Mm -hmm. um, so it became a way of, again, cataloging, you know, all these things that are happening in the world. And as a note taking device of like, I want to create a visual that, you know, references this. I want to create a visual that addresses this. Yeah. Um, so you, so you, it started you, with you. You have a lot of uh, um, found footage material that you are actually combining to uh, a new animated world. So is this sure. something that uh, is actually uh, the, the basis for this collage or the, the, the research actually? So finding uh, sure. all these materials. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for this piece, uh, you know, there was a lot that came from my own life as well, and I think in. In doing this kind of cataloging and research, um, I think, you know, it's it's forced it forced me to kind of have to reassess my own way of living. Mm -hmm. um, there is a scene, I think it's in the trailer, and maybe it'll play in the background, where I'm drowning in an ocean full of plastic, and I think that's become like a very yeah. strong mental image for a lot of us, as we've seen like the Pacific um, garbage patch and stuff yeah. like that, or just trash on the beach. Um, so I was really trying to reduce my intake of plastics when I was grocery shopping and in that scene with the ocean where I'm drowning in um, a plastic filled ocean a lot of that plastic came from you know my own trash um, I, I just went into the back of the building the, the the apartment building that I live in and pulled a bunch of trash out from the recycling bin and filmed all of them so I think there's like I don't know, 30, 40 pieces of trash that I kind of looped into a movement so that I can have them floating in the ocean as I'm drowning. Yeah. Um, as well as some footage that I shot um, around California, including an oil field that I came across when I was on the road trip um, in Bakersfield. Um, and I had shot that footage like two years ago, being like, wow, this looks crazy. Um, but then, you know, as I was making this piece, I reached back into my iPhone library and pulled it back out um, and and took some of the footage of the um, the oil pumps and integrated into this like rebuilt it into the scene that I, um, yeah. that happens in infinitely yours so um, definitely I think there's a lot of things from my life uh, both that I went and shot uh, specifically for the piece like footage of the LA River um, two things that were just in my life from years ago that I kind of pulled back out into this piece um, um, telling the story, actually, so you, you um, collected a lot of pieces, materials, images, uh, uh, 25 minutes. So is there a kind of a storyboard at the beginning or is it more an experimental approach? Uh, also working with uh, um, the sound designer, for instance. So mm -hmm. how do you um, actually uh, start uh, telling the story uh, with this very special uh, performance? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I don't tend to be an animator that has a whole planned out storyboarded script. Um, I tend to work with a series of images and just start developing them and then start to figure out how I could tie them together. Mm -hmm. um, definitely having access to music early on helps build the backbone of the rhythm and the intensity of how I want things in the arc of how I want things to play out. So for this piece, um, the music isn't original music for the piece. But um, because I have a friend in Los Angeles, Morgan Thorne, who's an amazing musician, um, who agreed to work with me and gave me access to his like huge library of music. So I could go through like six albums and be like, oh, this one's starting to feel like, you know, the scene that I want for, you know, this forest fire scene or whatever. Um, so I think it really helped to have access to that and to start building to the music. Mm -hmm. um, and... Once I started building, um, and you know, it's very much a very integrated process. It's not like I make all the animation, then I'm like, okay, how do I put my performing body into this? Um, I would make just even a still image or a sketch and then project it 
Um, I, I have the setup that I describe at the screen in the front and rear projector that I can set up in my living room. Okay. So that it's a very integrated process of testing, documenting myself, and seeing if the effects and the compositions work, mm -hmm. and then pushing it further and further, and you know, building a scene out of it. It's it's, um, it's, it's mm -hmm. really uh, amazing. So your performance uh, um, with with uh, uh, the projected uh, animated. Uh, um, collage is really uh, uh, this is great to see so everything is on point uh, uh, it's unbelievable I would really love to see the live performance and also to sit in the background to see you acting so this is um, an amazing work uh, is it um, do you have to to prepare your uh, performance um, uh, weeks and weeks and uh, how, how do you handle this so it's really impressive Sure. Um, as I said, you know, the performance and the animation is kind of built into, you know, an integrated way. So by the time I'm done, um, I have to rehearse some, but, you know, it's, I've been doing it the whole time for like mm -hmm. the two years that I'm developing the work. Um, so it becomes very much like a muscle memory. And I am using the music like a dancer to choreograph the movement. Yeah. So I know with the rhythm and, you know, the melody, like when something happens. Okay. Um, besides that, I also have a few things like spike marks. So that's tape marks I put on the floor. Okay. So I know yeah. where to stand before you know an image happens, or um, I know where how far from the screen I need to be to make my shadow the size that it needs to be. Because you know, of course, it's um, shadow. So if I move closer to the source of the light, I get bigger. If I move closest to the screen, I'm about like a one-to-one -one size. Yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting because you know in If I were a performer in front of the audience, I can't suddenly get bigger and smaller, but as a shadow, I can. So there's a lot of um, kind of cinematic devices that I could play with as a shadow figure, as opposed to yeah, a yeah. person in front of the audience as a real, you know, flesh person. But you also told me that uh, um, uh, sometimes you all also have a, a live audio. So uh, in this uh, live oh, yeah. performance, mm -hmm. so it's. It's quite challenging. So if it's uh, pre-recorded, uh, there is not really uh, a place for um, um, mistakes. But if, if it's uh, everything is live, um, I think this is quite challenging. Yeah. So for Infinitely Yours, because all the music was, you know, by one person, by Morgan Sorn, um, we have two versions of the show that we could do. One is that I'm working with all pre-recorded music. Another version, which we did at um, Sundance at New Frontiers, is that um, he made tracks that pulled a lot of the layers out. So there was some um, bass layers that was kind of like a metronome of like beats and drums. But he was able to perform live. Um, so you could hear you know, the, some of the layers so he doesn't lose time. But then he's able to add vocals, add textures, mm. add chimes and bells and additional drums. Um, so it's really cool to have the, the two-person live you know like even more live show yeah. um yeah so in in this situation uh, um, uh the pandemic actually is is uh, how do you handle um uh, these performances uh, is it possible are you still uh performing on stage without an audience uh, so sure. you, you told us uh, uh, that it was premiered at sundance uh, mm -hmm. in january mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so, you know, unfortunately, I'm sure a lot of artists out there are familiar with the pandemic and things becoming canceled. Um, so I was kind of at a loss for a while, but there has been a few festivals that's been able to support doing a live stream of the show. Yeah. And as I said, I developed a piece in my living room because my living room was actually big enough to put the whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, the front and rear projector in the screen. Um, so just a few weeks ago, I did a streaming uh, show for a festival in Canada, um, you know, kind of like my living room to yours, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can see like the couches in the corner and like an arch that I have to film it through. Um, but it's, it's kind of a nice, intimate way to show the work. But, you know, um, like right now, I can only show video, but there is a lot of weight to it being a live performance. Um, that I'm a, the audience sees me as a real person. I know the audience is there too. We're breathing the same air and there's mm -hmm. a certain kind of empathetical, emotional connection that I can make with the audience that is hard to recreate um, as a documentation video or even as a live stream. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure yeah. there is a huge difference between seeing it uh, um, 
online on a video and uh, so I'm, I'm really curious uh, I would really love to see this uh, the live performance uh, but can you give us uh, some insights uh, do you have a feedback from the audience because I'm, I'm really wondering uh, this performance is kind of creating a magic uh, um, mm -hmm. in this um, uh, um, suspension, suspension of disbelief is this something that is uh, uh, very important in your work does this serve the narrative so sure um yeah i consider the uh, you know because it's a live performance i consider the piece to have sort of two narratives there's a narrative of the storytelling right so there's like the animated um story that i'm a part of but then there's also sort of the narrative the audience especially a live audience experiences of the construction Mm -hmm. There's the illusion in the construction. So, you know, they see me walk in behind the screen. Yeah. You know, they kind of understand that there's projectors. But I think there's a lot of, like, how is she doing that? And that's definitely the feedback that I get from a lot of audiences. And sort of like this inner battle of, you know, how is she doing that? But then kind of getting lost into uh, the illusions. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, as a, a theatrical piece, you know, it's, it's both expanded cinema and, kind of expanded performance almost, um, that there is like this empathetical connection that I make with the audience and kind of an investment um, into completing the illusions with me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as much as I try, you know, nothing is completely synced and like 100% lined up with my shadow and the images. So I think when the audience see it, they are kind of buying in, suspending their disbelief into helping complete the illusions with me. Mm -hmm. And I think there's almost like this collaborative process of like, you know, seeing, creating and seeing the illusions together. Yeah. And I think that's um, like, that's a really important part, component of my work and that kind of shared mental space that yeah. my work hopefully creates. The, the jury uh, statement also uh, mentioned, um, or the jury mentioned uh, the, the vivid uh, um, uh, source of inspiration. So. Uh, the first uh, interactions uh, between animators and animations at the beginning of animation history. Uh, and also, uh, it's, it's a broad range of uh, inspirations, uh, even to, to music videos. So, um, uh, can you give us um, some of your, or can you tell us um, the most important references for your work? Mm -hmm. um, I like to kind of go back to even like Munzer McKay and his performances with Gertie the Dinosaur um, in terms of it was a pre-made animated um, dinosaur animation that he made. This is like, you know, over a hundred years ago, yeah. <laughs> by the way. Um, and then as a vaudeville act, he would interact with it. It was, it was all timed out and choreographed where he would, you know, tell the dinosaur to turn around and it would. Um, but, you know, in some ways, you know, I'm using like technology, I'm using computers. It's again, this computer animation, but um, Technique-wise, it's almost not that different from that, right? Um, so I think there's sort of a, I, I like to kind of draw that connection. Um, and in terms of inspiration, um, Michelle Gondry was a big influence in, like, when all those DVDs came out in like 2000 mm -hmm. or so. Um, in terms of how he explores like a, a technical um, puzzle, um, and then that's almost like a part of the narrative as well as a narrative that he weaves yeah, okay. through the illusions yeah. that he creates. Yeah. So early on when I was just starting to experiment with this kind of technique um, that I was developing, I was thinking a lot about his work as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, quite interesting. Yeah. And also uh, to this um, um, discussion, expanded cinema uh, with uh, uh, Stan van der Beek's uh, movie drum uh, performing uh, on stage with a lot of uh, uh, visuals and animations. Uh, yeah, that's. I think uh, there are so many references, and that's that perfectly fits in this discussion. Uh, so, uh, yeah, unfortunately, you will not come uh, to Ars Electronica in September. It's really a pity. Uh, so, uh, I think we we will meet each other uh, on on Skype again, and we will talk. Uh, but there will be uh, the the Cyber Arts exhibition in Linz, where we will feature uh, infinitely yours uh, as well, mm -hmm. uh, but without your performance. So I think this is... Uh, so, uh, 
thank you so much for, for your insight, uh, for uh, your uh, inspiring presentation. And I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to talk with you uh, during the Ars Electronica uh, Festival in September. Uh, so maybe we find a, a perfect uh, um, um, presentation. Uh, maybe also, I, I like this idea of having uh, the living room as a stage uh, to perform. Uh, so there, there are a lot of challenging challenges. So thank you so much. Uh, also to the audience, uh, it's uh, thank you for joining. Uh, we have uh, uh, just started uh, introducing uh, the winners uh, of Prias Electronica uh, last week, uh, and this is uh, this will uh, be uh, an ongoing um, um, series. So in the next weeks, uh, we will present further Golden Nika winners in the category computer animation. So uh, stay tuned and uh, see you soon uh, here at Ars Electronica Home Delivery. Thank you so much, Miva. With you. Thank you. Bye-bye.